click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about Coke Converter. Similarly to the buck boost converter, the Cook converter can convert a DC value input to either a high value of DC output or a comparatively low value of DC output and the output voltage will be opposite to the input voltage. So let's see how the circuit diagram of a Cook converter look like. So I have got the input voltage DC inductor. And this is the MOSFET which I have, which is an N type of MOSFET. This is the gate control drive of the MOSFET. So a capacitor is connected here and a diode is connected here. Now there will be a second type of inductor. Let's say this is L1, this is L2, this is C, this is Q, this is D. And this is the output capacitance. Let's say this is C2 and I can make it a C1. And this is the resistive load. Now let's say this is V0 is the instantaneous output voltage and VA be the average value of output voltage. Let's say this is plus, this is minus, this is plus, this is minus. So IL be the inductor current which is equal to IS. Now let's say IC1 is the current across the first capacitor, IC2 is the current across the second capacitor, VC2 is the voltage across the second capacitor, VC1 is the voltage across the first capacitor. Let's say this is plus minus and let's say D is the diode. Now friends, if we discuss more about the circuit, when the switch is on, we have got the circuit diagram as, so here is the capacitor. So I'm just putting a shot here just to mention that the switch is on right now. Now this is my output resistive load R, this is C2, this is C1, this is L1, this is L2, this is D, and we have got I L1. So this is where time starts from 0 to a time t1 where t1 is my on time. During off time what happens is that from time t1 to t so we get the circuit as this. This will be open the switch. This is Vs plus minus then again I've got the second inductor L2, this is L1, this is C1, this is D and I've got the second capacitor here which is C2 and I've got the resistive load which is R. Now friends, let's discuss about what happens exactly when the inductor charges and when the inductor discharges. Now friends, let's draw the voltage across the output register or the resistive load with respect to time. T, let's say this is V not we get this is a, let's say KT be the duty cycle which is the on time we get as this because for a specific interval of time we get the output voltage. Now if I draw the graph between the time and the inductor current. So here the inductor current charges and this point of time during off time inductor current discharges again the same process goes on. So this value will be equal to I2 and this value will be equal to I1. Now friends if I draw the diagram between IL2 so let's say this is IL1 I L2 versus time, I get the same kind of waveform. One is charging and one is discharging and one is again charging. So this will be KT, this will be T. So this will be in parallel to the first inductor. Now if I draw further, 
let's draw the graph between i c 2 and time so i c 2 and time it looks like this it starts from the negative peak to the positive peak again gets discharged to the negative peak now if i draw i c 1 with respect to time so i c 1 with respect to time will be again the same process continues now friends hope you understood the graph because i already explained in the earlier lectures how to draw the graph of a boost buck buck boost converter so now we drew the graph of a cook converter now let's derive some mathematical expressions so friends as we all know the vl is equal to let's say l1 i l12 minus i l11 divided by t1 where l1 is the first inductor vl is the voltage across the first inductor let's say inductor switched current from i l 1 1 to i l 1 2 in time t 1 hence t 1 becomes delta i 1 l 1 divided by v l or v l can also be written as v s applying k v l during charging So what happens during discharging? Now, during discharging, the current flows from I L12 to I L11. So T2 becomes delta I1 L1 divided by V S minus V C1. So that's the value of the off time. So where V C1 is the voltage across the first capacitor. Vs is the source or input voltage, I1 L1 or delta I1 is the peak to peak ripple inductor current and L1 is the first inductance. Delta I1 is equal to Vs into T1 divided by L1 which is equal to Vs minus Vc1 divided by L1 into T2. Hence, if I put T1 is equal to Kt and T2 is equal to 1 minus K into T, I get vc1 is equal to vs into 1 minus 2k divided by 1 minus k hence vc1 is equal to voltage across the first capacitor finally we get to know 1 minus 2k divided by 1 minus k now friends if i write the further equation vc1 minus va that is equal to l2 I L22 minus I L21 divided by T1 that is equal to L2 delta I2 divided by T1 where I L22 is the peak current of the second inductor, I L21 is the starting current of the second inductor, and T1 is the charging time or the on time, which becomes T1 is equal to delta I2 into L2 divided by Vc1 minus Va. Again, when the L2 or when the second inductor discharges linearly, we get Va that is equal to minus L2 delta I2 divided by T2, which is equal to or implies that T2 is equal to minus delta I2 into L2 divided by Va. Now friends, if we talk further, we get delta I2 that is equal to Vc1 minus Va into T1 divided by L2 that is equal to minus Va T2 divided by L2. If we put T1 is equal to Kt and T2 is equal to 1 minus K into T where T1 is the on time and T2 is the off time, I get Vc1 that is equal to minus Va 1 minus 2k divided by k so that is the voltage or the average value of the capacitance voltage across the capacitor 1 or the first capacitor c1 as we all know if i 
minimize if I ignore the switching losses or if I consider the switching losses to be zero I can easily write VSIS that is equal to VA into IA that is equal to VSIAK divided by 1 minus K hence IS becomes KIA divided by 1 minus K now if I calculate the total time period which is equal to 1 by frequency that is equal to T1 plus T2 which becomes delta I1 L1 to Vs minus Vc1 divided by Vs Vs minus Vc1. So this gives or with, from this equation we can calculate the peak to peak ripple inductor current where delta I1 is equal to Vs into K divided by F into L1. Again, in the same way, we can easily calculate delta I2 is equal to minus Va into 1 minus K divided by F into L2 that is equal to KVS divided by FL2. Now, as we all know, Vc1 or average value of the capacitor voltage is equal to integration 1 by C1 0 to T2 IC1 dt that is equal to 1 by C1 into from 0 to T2 IS that is equal to IS T2 divided by C. So delta VC1 that is equal to IS into 1 by K divided by FC1 that is the final value of the ripple voltage across the first capacitor which I counted or which I calculated from the earlier equations. Now friends in the same way the peak capacitance voltage or the peak voltage across the capacitor of the second capacitor is equal to 1 by C2 integral 0 to T by 2 I C2 dt that is equal to delta I2 divided by 8 FC2 which is equal to delta V C2. So friends so this is the mathematical expressions of a Kirk converter which is explained for R load. Now we all came to know about what a Cook converter does, how does it operate, how to calculate the average value of the output voltage, average value of the input ripple current, average value of the ripple voltage across the capacitor and etc. Thank you so much friends for watching this video. Please subscribe to Ikeda and please stay tuned to the Ikeda. Thank you so much.